drop the brace. What's up guys, it's Bob here from Foas RS, and today I'm going to do something a little bit different than what I've done in my past videos. I'm actually going to do a quick guide series starting with power slaying, and I'm going to go over exactly what power slaying stands for and what exactly you need to do to be power slaying and making the most out of it. So, what I mean by power slaying is using piety and also a cannon on any task that you get. Well, any task that you can actually cannon, but piloting every task and getting the quickest experience per hour out of each task that you possibly can. Now, this is a little bit pricey. It requires 70 prayer, which is about, I think, from 43 is probably about 5 mil because Dragon Bones are about 1.8k each in 07 when I'm recording this. So, it's definitely expensive, but it's also definitely worth it. The only other problem is it actually requires King's Ransom, which is 65 defense, which I actually have. But for Pures and Zerkers, King's Ransom isn't a, a viability, so you're going to have to uh, use not use Piety. You could also you could just use um, Ultimate Strength and Incredible Reflexes if you really wanted to. I think it might have the same drain, drain rate as Piety does, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Now, I'll demonstrate exactly... Um, what I'm going to talk about in this next part. It's uh, called prayer flicking. A lot of you have probably heard it before, but it's really effective for tests that you want to pray on but don't want to spend money on pea pods. You can just time your click to the monster's attack speed. I missed there. And um, it'll protect you 100% without actually ha using any prayer points. Now, this is really effective on tests like Infernal Mages or Blood Builds or anything that require. Um, Dehide, so even if you miss, they might not get hit because of the magic defense on it. But it's also really useful on any other task. And you can also flick on and off piety or ultimate strength or any of the things you're using, but it's a little bit more complicated if you're going to double click uh, protection prayers and uh, inc attack increasing prayers. Now, the second thing I want to show you is something that not a lot of people probably know about. I don't know if it's going to do it in this video, because of course whenever I'm recording nothing works the way I want it to. But if I go and click on this ring as a monster's attacking me from the east, and when see he was attacking me, okay, it did it anyway. So it was attacking me from the north, and it drug me all the way over here. And if you can see in the top, or the east corner of my map there, you can actually click on where Chowder is, and it'll just run you directly over there. It's a little quick tip. It's not really like, oh my god, it's super amazing, but it's definitely helpful. I, I actually found that out by accident when I was using the fairy rings. So, it's really nice to just be able to walk over to Shadow and talk to her and get a new task without too much of an effort. Instead of having to click about four times to get to here, it saves a little bit of your wrists. So, the third thing I want to go over is quests that are useful for power slaying and almost essential for power slaying, pretty much. And the first is going to be Monkey Madness, because this game is the best strength training weapon in this game at the time I'm recording this. I don't think there will be any others released, but who knows? The community can always vote on what they want released or not, so we'll see. But this game, I have to say, is a must. Other than getting a whip, which a lot of you, well, a lot of people don't have, and I'm sure most of the people, if not all the people watching this video, don't have one. These skims your best bet until you can afford one, so it's definitely um, a must. Absolutely no question having to do that quest if you want to be serious about slaying. Now the second one is Slug Menace, and Slug Menace actually gives you Proselyte Armor, which is the step up from Initiate, and it gives, I believe, mm, six prayer bonus over Initiate without the helm, um, the top and the... the the plate and the legs, I think, if 6 over what Initiate gives, which also is 6 over what um, Monk Robes gives. And the prayer bonus is just awesome. And with here, I'll show you without um, my prayer bonus here with the stuff that I have on is 19, and this would be a black mask when you're slaying. So this is what your ideal setup would be if you're using Proselyte Armor and uh, Zami Cloak or any God Cloak for that matter. It gives plus 3. Prayer. That's another thing that I should mention. Prayer cloaks are definitely the way to go until you get a, a fire cape because fire capes give plus two prayer anyway, but not everybody's gonna have one. So this gives plus three prayer and it costs seven hundred. I bought mine for seven hundred. It's probably a little bit cheaper now. I'm not one hundred percent sure, but yeah, that's another 
must in my opinion. And also while I'm on this screen, the Green Defender is also something that I absolutely recommend getting because it just makes you not miss. In combination with the the Black Mask, it's just, you just rarely hit zeros, it's unbelievable. Now, the next quest I mentioned before is King's Ransom, and that's for Piety and Chivalry, but you're going to want to use Piety, because hopefully you'll have 70 prayer by the time you want to get serious about Slayer, and Piety just speeds everything up, and again, accompanied with the Defender and the Black Mask, you will not, well, I can't say will not, but it's really unlikely that you'll hit a zero when you're using all three of them at once. Now, the fourth quest that I actually want to talk about is something that a lot of people probably don't have now, and I myself don't have right now, which is, I actually don't have King's Ransom either, but I don't have Semi Prayer yet, but I will be doing that once I get it, is uh, Lunar Diplomacy. Now, you might be wondering why exactly this is good, and it's actually because on the Lunar Spellbook, there's a spell called NPC Contact, and what this spell does is you can talk to, um, Dirdell, and I believe Shelder too, but I'm not 100% sure, and I think Turio as well, so you can actually cancel tasks without actually going to birth up as well, so it's really useful, and it makes getting new tasks less of a hassle, like, if you're using Vinaka, you know how annoying it is to walk to Edgeville from either Fairy Rings or from for Rock or from Bard, it's, it's really out of the way, so if you had that, um, it would be really useful. Now the next two I'm going to talk about is, I honestly think you should not be flying if you don't have these two quests on, which is Ghost Ahoy and, and Fairy Tale Part 2, at least the beginning of Fairy Tale Part 2. And what these quests offer is, the Ghost Ahoy offers the Ectophile, which is the quick teleport to the Ectofunctus, which is in Canifus. And fairy, the start of Fairy Tale Part 2 offers the access to Fairy Rings, which pretty much opens a ton of teleports that you're going to use during your power slaying. And it's pretty much essential. I, I honestly do not see a reason to slay unless you've done those quests because it just is so convenient and makes it saves you so much time walking a task. Now the final thing I want to go over, it doesn't work as well in 07 as it does in um, C, so EOC error right now, is blocking and hiding while cannoning. And what I mean by this, say this was your slayer task and you had a cannon out. If you walked behind this tree and there wasn't any monster attacking you from here, and it's a single way combat area, the cannon would actually attack all the other ones um, in the area as well, but since they're not attacking you, it doesn't count as you being in combat. So there's actually not a pet out at this time that is used as a blocking pet, because the one in uh, EOC is either Platypus, which is summoning, or the Tooth Pet, which is from Fairy Tale Part 3, so neither are available right now. But there is actually a way to hide in certain tasks, especially Hellhound is probably the best example. If you cannon on the lower area, near the, there's like a, a pillar, if you walk behind the pillar as your cannon's firing, it's actually going to keep you safe from all the Hellhounds, and they'll all get attacked at once, and you won't have to worry about anything. So it gives out, it, I think it maxes at like 20k, maybe even 25k Slayer experience an hour, which is really good for times right now. Uh, you'll get higher experience when you get higher level, but it's definitely, definitely useful. That's going to wrap it up for me, guys. Uh, I'll be banking another video on Thursday because Brian actually has a final on Friday, so I'm going to switch places with him. And I'll be doing a progress video for 07 because I've been getting a lot done. You guys have seen a couple things that I've gotten since my last one. So I'll be able to show you guys then. Take care.